Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Now today I want to introduce you to one of the most colourful expressions in backgammon, the banana split. Now you may have heard of falcons and tigers and racks and lovers leaps, but banana split has got to be one of the best terms out there. Now what is the banana split I hear you ask? Well, the banana split is when you deliberately weaken your home board by breaking one of your home board points to attack an opponent's checker. Now this is usually a last resort play, a last chance saloon, but not always. The banana splitting play can also be used strategically at certain match scores to boost your gammon wins. Now I'm going to show you a few positions to demonstrate this. So without further ado, let us begin. Now here White has a 4-1 to play. Notice a match score 4 away, 2 away and the cube has been turned. Now how should you make this play? Okay, you've guessed it. The correct move is indeed the banana split, 13, 9, 5 to 4. Now, the first thing to notice is at this match score with the cube turned, White is playing gammon go because four points would win the match for White. So here we want to kind of make the play that wins the most gammons. And indeed, the best play of the banana split does lead to an 8% increase in gammons. Now, why is that? Now, before making any play in backgammon, you should scan the four quadrants of a board. And by doing so, you will notice that in Green's home board, he has a weakness. Two blots are exposed. So there is vulnerabilities in his home board and we need to take advantage of that as white. Now, if we look at the board after the move has been played in the bottom right corner, we can think, well, what is likely to happen now? And we can play it forward as Zenek Ziska does. Now, if Green dances with 16 rolls out of 36, we as White have many rolls in which we can cover the five and four point or safety of the checkers, and he really puts us in the driving seat. Alternatively, if Green enters with 20 rolls, a five or a four, then we are going to have a lot of returns as white to pick up one of those two blots in green's home board. For, for instance, if green rolls a 4-2, for instance, we're gonna get a shot at one of those checkers in his home board. And again, you can go through the rolls. Now, the thing to realize in this position is it works both ways. If green enters, it's good. If he doesn't enter, it's also good. So when you look at the whole board, it guides you towards making the best play, which is indeed the banana split. Now this wouldn't be correct uh, for money. At money, it would be 39, seven to six, but certainly at this score, a gammon go, then it is imperative to make the banana split and push yourself towards a gammon win. So the second position, it is the same score, four away, two away with a cube turn, and white has a five one to play. Now the one obviously comes in from the bar, and then the five, we only have two options. We can either break the anchor, 21 to 16, or we can make the banana splitting play six to one. So what is best? Now again, the banana splitting play is correct. Now, when you are faced with two decisions, you need to evaluate them and decide which one is slightly better. You don't want to make the worst play out of the two decisions. So you need to think here, well, is it worse to break the anchor or is it worse to make the banana splitting play? And it is indeed worse to break the anchor. And why is that? Well we can look at Green's front structure. He has 12 checkers there, a whole mountain of attackers, and it's often incorrect to jump off an anchor in front of a blitz structure. By making the wrong play here, which will be 21-16 with the five, we are just leaving ourselves extremely vulnerable to Green attacking us, making 
a point on our head or escaping the back checker. We're giving Green the whole role, the full role to make points, to escape, to do many things, giving him a lot of initiative in the position. If we make the correct play instead of 6-1, resulting in a bottom right position, things can swing in our favour. For instance, Green can dance with 16 rolls. We can then cover our ace point with a, a 4 or a 5 and some combinations. And if Green dances, we as white can jump off our anchor and pick up one of those two blots in the outfield with combinations of eight and nine. So you can see here that the banana split is the best play when you evaluate the two decisions. And looking at the panel on the left, the banana splitting play does result in slightly more wins and slightly more gammons. So even though it looks risky, it's actually less risky than making the wrong play of breaking the anchor. And finally, we had this third position, same score and the cube has been turned. White has to play a 2-1. The two, of course, comes in from the bar. And how do you play the one? So here, the right move is to play Bar 23, eight to seven. And indeed the banana splitting play, even at this score would be a blunder. So again, we have to try to work out why, what is a why behind the correct move. Now here, there are other avenues to victory. There are other ways to win this. Now the banana split is unnecessary because Green is trapped behind our prime and already he has a number of bad numbers such as double four and double five. And of course, if Green does not escape with a six, then he's going to have a whole ton of bad rolls which follow. And that is because Green has very poor timing. If you look at the outfield, Green has only one checker to bring back into his home board. And after he has done that, then many rolls without a six are going to just crunch his front position. So here we don't need to do the banana split. Also, if we look at our position after making the correct play, which is on the bottom right, we are putting a lot of pressure on green to roll a six to hit us. If green does not roll a six pretty immediately, then we have as white ones to make a six prime, sixes to hit him loose, fives to jump off the anchor. So the banana split as a last resort is not needed here. By making the banana split, we are actually giving him more numbers to hit us. We are now giving him 20 numbers, whereas with a right play, we're only giving him 11 from, from the point that he's on to hit our white checker on the bar. So... There are other ways to win here, and you can see that the banana split does lead to a reduction of 6% in winning chances. So if you attempted to make the banana splitting here, then think again, think, is it necessary? In those first two positions I showed you, the banana split was necessary because there were no good alternative options, or we were playing for a gammon because of weaknesses in our opponent's home board. But here, there are other ways to victory. So a few things to think about in this short lesson on the colorful banana split. I hope you pick something up, use it over the board. It, it's rare, but it does come up and it's also very cool if you make these plays. Um, good luck, happy dice, and see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.